Tonight, President Trump and House Republicans are celebrating what they are calling a major victory. Today, the House passed by a whisker the GOP health care bill. True, it is the first piece of major legislation that President Trump has succeeded in getting past the first hurdle in Congress. But as we've been discussing, it was a heavy lift. Now an even higher hurdle is looming in the Senate, where the battle is expected to go to a whole new level. Senator Bernie Sanders joins us now. Senator Sanders, earlier this afternoon, you tweeted, quote, Donald Trump and Republicans just celebrated voting to let thousands of Americans die so that billionaires get tax breaks. Is that really what you think is happening here? Do you think thousands of Americans exactly. will die? If Absolutely. No question. If, if, which is not going to happen, Anderson, but if the bill passed today in the House became law, thousands of Americans would die because they would no longer have access to health care. Anderson, it is wrong to talk about what happened in the House today as a health care bill. This was not a health care bill. This was a bill that provided $300 billion in tax breaks to the wealthiest 2% at a time when we already have massive income inequality in America today. This was a bill. What kind of health care bill are we talking about when you throw 24 million people off of health insurance, substantially raise premiums for older workers, defund Planned Parenthood? You know, these guys, Republicans, talk about choice. Everybody should have a choice. Two and a half million women choose Planned Parenthood. But that's no longer going to be the case. And by the way, they cut Medicaid by some $800 billion. So when the president and, says you know, the premiums the will thing, go down, deductibles will go down, you're saying that's just not true. Well, <laughs> look, in all due respect to President Trump, I think most Americans don't believe what he says very, very much. One of the interesting things that he said today, I guess he was sitting next to the Australian prime minister, and he said something to the effect, well, you know, your system is better than our system. Well, Mr. President, you're right. In Australia and every other major country on earth, they guarantee health care to all people. They don't throw 24 million people off of health insurance. So maybe when we get to the Senate, we should start off with looking at the Australian health care system or the Canadian health care system, which guarantees health care to all people at a much lower cost per capita than we do. Do you believe that the president is deliberately misleading or do you think he just doesn't understand or is simply misinformed? <laughs> You know, Anderson, you know, think about, I mean, it's unfortunate that you have to ask that question. Is he lying or does he not know what he's talking about? I don't know the answer to that, but it's pretty pathetic, whatever it may be. Whatever the case may be, what he is telling is, what he is saying is inaccurate and not truthful. You know, a lot of Republicans point to the fact that, that just yesterday, Aetna announced it was pulling out of Virginia's individual market due to big Obamacare losses. In Iowa, the Obamacare program there is on the verge of collapse. Republicans are saying, you know, why shouldn't we be taking action to stop things like that from happening? Well, first of all, one of the things that's happening, and this will be a Republican tactic, uh, mark my words on this, not just on health care, but on Social Security as well. Uh, what they are doing now is very consciously sabotaging the Affordable Care Act. Does the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, have problems? You bet it does. Deductibles are too high. Uh, premiums are too high, uh, co-payments are too high, it has problems. We should address those serious problems. But what they are doing is trying to sabotage it right now, for example, not enforce the individual mandate. Many billions of dollars are not coming into the system and then rates are going up. And then they say, oh look, it's a terrible situation, rates are going up. They will do the same thing on Social Security. After you give huge tax breaks, to the hundreds of billions of dollars, to the very rich, they'll say, oh, the deficit is going up. We've got to cut Social Security. That's the only way we deal with the deficit. That is their tactic. Your colleague, Senator Lindsey Graham, he tweeted uh, today, he said, I believe it may, it may take Obamacare's collapse before the parties are willing to work together in a bipartisan manner. Would you work with Republicans like Senator, Senator Graham on, on this bill in the Senate? Or is this something that you don't want any part of? No, of course. I mean, the goal is... How do we guarantee health care to all people uh, without spending, as we do today, almost twice as much per capita? That's the goal. How do we have a cost-effective health care system where we put our emphasis on disease prevention, uh, where we can guarantee health care to all Americans? And I'm prepared to work with Lindsey Graham, anybody else, toward that goal. The function of health care right now, to be honest with you, is for insurance companies to make very large profits and the drug companies to charge us by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. I noticed, despite all of Trump's rhetoric about lowering 
prescription drug costs, they don't have any language in there. We could save many billions of dollars if we had the guts to take on the pharmaceutical industry and pay the same prices for prescription drugs as the people in countries around the world. You know, the president now says he's, he's so confident, that was his term, that this bill is going to get through the Senate, maybe some minor changes, but he's very confident. Will this actually right, get through me, the Senate? Let me, some break, okay. Anderson, let me break the bad news to the president. Mr. President, I'm sorry to disappoint you. This bill, in its current form, is not getting through the Senate. No way, no way. How, how, how much uh, does it need to change? I mean, how major changes are you talking about? I mean, I, I talked to Senator McCain earlier I think today. You take talked this about pre-existing conditions, obviously Medicaid as well. You take this bill and you, you know, we don't want to clog up toilets or anything, but you just toss it into a garbage can and you start again. Uh, this bill is a disaster. It is an embarrassment. And I want to say to the people who voted for Trump, and I know that many of them are decent people who actually believe what he said during the campaign. Remember what he told you? He said, we are going to provide health care to everybody, and it's going to be less expensive. Providing health care to everybody is not throwing 24 million people off of health insurance. So this, this uh, in my view, uh, this health care bill uh, is an embarrassment. Uh, it's an insult to the American people. And in the Senate, we will start with zero, from zero, and do something that will work for ordinary Americans. How important is it for you to get a CBO score uh, from, uh, from the Congressional Budget Office? Well, obviously, it's enormously important. You know, Anderson, one of the, of the many outrages that we saw today is when you are dealing with legislation that impacts one-seventh of the United States economy. All right, this is huge. Don't you think maybe there might have been a hearing or two to discuss the implications of this legislation. These guys put it together in a few weeks' time, zero hearings. They didn't hear from the American Medical Association who opposed this legislation. They didn't hear from the hospitals that opposed this legislation. They didn't hear from the AARP, largest senior group in America, who opposes this legislation because it'll be a disaster for older workers. This is, I mean, you don't deal with one-seventh of the economy in a couple of weeks without one public hearing. It is an embarrassment. So we're going to, in the Senate, start from zero and hopefully come up with a legislation that is improves on Obamacare. Uh, hopefully, we'll guarantee health care to all of our people and do it in a more cost-effective way. Uh, Senator Sanders, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson. Just ahead, after a 